All right, we're in the second ball. Um, first thing that I need to talk about is uh, mass and weight. Fortunately, I don't have my spring, spring scales with me, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, weight, weight is a force. Weight is a force. Weight is specifically the force of gravity acting on the object. Mass, someone define mass for me, please. What is mass? Nope. Mass has nothing to do with gravity. The amount of matter in a, in a substance, right? Space, when you talk about the amount of space something takes up, what's that? Volume. Good. Volume is the amount of space it takes up. Matter, um, excuse me, mass is the amount of matter in a substance. Really, if you want to simplify this down, because matter, what's the definition of matter? Um, really, the best definition of matter is stuff, right? In the English language, we can just say mass is the amount of stuff, an object. Okay? The more stuff is crammed into an object, the more mass it has. Right? Mass is the amount of stuff you have in there. Um, weight, on the other hand, is a force. Weight equals mass times gravity. And I, I want to go ahead and set this up also, because weight is the same thing as the force of gravity. And you're going to see this a lot. The force of gravity is mass times the acceleration of gravity. Now, all this comes from this equation, F equals ma. I'd like to bring you down, bring you down. All this comes from F equals MA. The force is the force of gravity or the weight. It's a force. Mass times G, the acceleration of gravity, 9.8. Okay? Now, whenever you go to the moon, right? You're the lucky one, right, girls? You're, you're, you're all happy to get to go to the moon. You're a hardcore physics student. You, know, you always want to go to the moon. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, so girls, you go to the moon, right? And you get on a scale. You want to make yourself feel good, right? And what does the scale read? Zero. No, not necessarily. Zero. There's gravity on the moon. Just a lot less, right? So your weight technically went down force of gravity on your on your body goes down. Your weight goes down whenever you go to your moon, whenever you go to the moon. Did you lose any mass? No. That Krispy Kreme donut, that 12, you know, that 12 Krispy Kreme donuts that's kind of poking out over here and gets into your little butt, it's still there. All right? It's still there. The flubber didn't go nowhere, right? The, 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 for me, you know, whenever my hair gets all shaggy, my hair didn't just magically disappear, nor did it because you're going to lose a lot of weight. Um, to, to do this on Earth, you'd have to lose tons of mass. We're talking like amputate a limb. Right. Last time I checked, whenever you went to the moon, you had the same amount of matter, right? You have the same amount of matter. What changes is the weight, because it's not the mass, who you are, the amount of stuff in you that changes. Whenever you go to the moon, what changes? The acceleration of gravity no longer is 9.8. It's about 1.6. Of Earth's gravity, one six, nine point eight. So okay. That'll get your mass. Now make sure your weight is in. Um, and I haven't got to this yet, but forces are measured in. Does anybody know? Newtons. Have we talked about that? Okay. Forces. That one for time. Force units. Here's the newton. Forces units. The newton. Now, what is energy? Energy. We're not there yet. Forces units is the new. Now, um, in the English system, pounds is your force of weight. You are correct whenever you say, I weigh 150 pounds. I weigh 170 pounds. Whatever it is. Okay? Now, whenever I say I weigh about 170 pounds, I'm actually telling you my weight, not my mass. Okay. Because the English system was developed here on Earth, right? And we're not having to do, use a change in gravity perspective and everything else. Um, it's not that big a deal. Obviously, you just talk about weight. Does anyone even know the unit for mass in the English system? That's in uh, metric. Stones? Nope. That's weight. Pounds is weight. What are we talking about? They said weight. Weight is pounds. What is mass? Slugs. Slugs. Slugs is the unit of mass in the English system. Pounds is the unit of weight in the English system. 
We don't even use maps in the English system, right? You never, you never heard of it. Please don't use the English system in this. Okay, it's going to mess you all up if you try to use pounds. You need to use what unit for mass? <laughs> What's the base unit for mass in our class? Kilograms. Please use kilograms for mass. What's the unit for acceleration? Meters per second squared. Unit for any force? Newtons. Make sure you use those three units. Newtons, kilograms, meters per second squared. If things come to you with any other unit, you must convert back to base units. Hold on. You know how like the pressure is affected by the gravity of the moon? Yep. Does that mean that gravity on Earth and our weight changes so slightly during the position of the moon? Is it stronger compared to water? Can it like make it like slightly less than 9.8 or maybe 9.5? Yes. Yes. Probably not 9.5. Not that strong. Oh but um, slightly. Yes. All right. Gravity does vary. Um, gravity does vary. We ran a lab to figure out what the acceleration of gravity was. Right? It wasn't too precise. Now, if we use more precise instruments, um, Madison's gravity might not be 9.81. Okay? It might be 9.7. It might be 9.9 .9 due to the density of the Earth. <coughs> Think about it. All matter, gravity is all matter attracting all other matter. Now, we don't know how it comes about. All we know is matter attracts each other. Right? Um, you can think about this odd enough, guys. You can uh, use this line or a girl some other time, but uh, yes, you are being attracted to the other person. Literally. Right? That there is gravity between um, Tanner and Paige. There's actually a force of gravity pulling them together. Okay? Uh, it's just so small that we don't even care about it. Okay? You can't feel it at all. Um, no force of gravity, you have to have an incredibly uh, huge mass. When you think about the Earth, insanely huge mass, right? And even then, the force of gravity isn't that great because, heck, you can overcome this force without any problem, right? You can jump off the ground and beat the force of gravity, and as long as you're able to still exert that force, it's not a big deal to whip the force of gravity. Gravity is wussy, all right? It's downright wussy. Okay. Yeah. So, say you put, like, uh, two lead balls and vacuum and waited like centuries, would they eventually touch? Um, if they were in a vacuum and you removed all other outside forces, yes, there is a force between them which would cause an acceleration eventually because of that acceleration they would be pulled together. Yes. A vacuum? A vacuum just means there's really nothing there. It's it's the absence of anything. Well, I mean, for us, we can use vacuum pumps. The main the main problem here on Earth is even whenever you have empty space, like right here, this isn't really empty space, right? It has air in it, right? And so the main thing that we've got to change in a vacuum is we've got to suck the air out of here on Earth. Some of these vacuum pumps. Right for that, um, which basically it's just like your average vacuum. It's how the vacuum works in your house, right? It sucks air, right? I mean, it actually sucks air, and then there's dirt particles on the floor since it's right next to the floor. It's sucking the dirt particles up with the air that it's pulling, okay? Um, so it's pumping air from one section to the other section to you take your vacuum um, and you attach it to this is a terrible example. If you attach it to a bag, right, or to a cylinder, and you suck the air out of the cylinder and you pump it out to the rig. Okay? If it's firm enough and it doesn't collapse in, if the structure is firm enough, right? If it's a true vacuum, no matter how firm the structure is, it's probably going to collapse in, um, um, depending on how good the vacuum is. Uh, but if it's firm enough, it'll hold. Right? Does anybody have, does anybody's parents have the vacuum bags? You know what I'm talking about? Space vacuum space storage space bags? Space, space bags. bags. Yeah. You actually take your vacuum, you just stick the you stick the hose up to it, you turn the vacuum on, you suck all the air. Same idea, except the bag shrinks in, right? Imagine keeping the bag firm. Instead of making it out of this little soft plastic, make it out of hard plastic. Make it out of glass. Okay. You suck all the air out and have a vacuum as close as we can get to. How do you know that? Right. Well, there's no way to know for sure. Um, 
one way that you can have, one way that uh, you know is by putting something in there, right, that you know naturally reacts. For example, if I was trying to see how big my vacuum was, I would put a peak in there. A marshmallow peak. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Marshmallow peaks? Yeah. You can put it in there before. Right. So it's in there, it's sitting there. So a peak is marshmallow. What's marshmallow? Is you got sugar and what's the other thing? Air. air. It's like sugar and air. Okay, that's all it is. Sticky sugar and air. And so as the air gets sucked out, what do you think this peak does? Oh, it expands like crazy. The little peak grows to ginormous size. Sorry. Right. Let me know you that. Um, I don't feel like I really need to do a demo here with this, okay, or to work problems. These are straightforward plug chunk problems. I tell you that an object has, a five kilogram object is here on Earth. What is its weight? Five kilogram. Five kilo, excuse me. Five kilogram object is its mass. What's the acceleration of gravity? 9.8, 9.8 times mass gives you something a little less than 50 newtons, right? A little bit less than 50 newtons, right? And it's plug chuck. I can reverse that, right? I can say I've got a force of gravity of 50 newtons here on Earth. What is its mass, right? Gravity is about 10, about 10. Force is 50 divided by both sides by 10, mass is 5. We okay with this idea? Okay. You can take this to the moon, right? Moon has a little bit smaller g. Five times that smaller g, it's actually about one sixth, okay, 9.8, um, gives you a, di a different weight up there. Does mass change? No. Your mass does not change unless you actually take some matter out of the object. What does change whenever you go to different planets? Your weight. Your weight is actually what ends up changing. Now, types of forces. Uh, this part, I would actually say with free body diagrams, is the most important part about this unit. If you are good with free body diagrams, as simple as they might seem, if you are good with free body diagrams, you will have no problem. If you just kind of work your way through them and whatever, I kind of got it right, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'll wait until we start plugging things into equations. You are sunk from the very beginning. Okay? It's not going to happen. You've got to get your free bodies right. The free body diagrams are, half, are what we use to be able to derive um, all of our equations. Types of forces that you're going to see. Um, force of gravity. Force of gravity, Fg. Okay? Um, Fp, I'm just going to label. It's a push or pull. Okay, it's a simple push and pull. Okay? And you can designate this whatever you like. But that's the push and pull. Um, force of friction. Friction. T. Tension in a rope. T. Tension in a rope. Right? Ropes have forces, but basically it's a push and pull, but the rope actually has tension in it. It's pulling the law. Right? So whenever you see a rope or chain, you need to think tension. What other force? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, and the normal force. Now, I feel like you're okay with all the others, right, with, with the uh, ones I've listed up there. When we talk about normal force, I'm going to work my way backwards. Um, normal force, and if you need to write this down, please do. Normal force is the force that a surface exerts back up on an object perpendicular to the surface. Yeah. Normal force is the force a surface exerts back up on a object perpendicular to the surface. Again, normal force is the force a surface exerts on an object or back up on an object perpendicular to that surface. Would that be like you and me against the wall? I lean against the wall, 
right? I push up a wall, wall must push back on me. The force it's doing that is the normal force. Okay? It's the force that keeps things from collapsing. It's the force of, so to speak, the structure of the object. Is the atoms not wanting to give way? Okay? It's all those bonds that are going on in solid, not wanting to cave them. Right? That's the normal force. Is the normal force of the wall constant whether you're touching it or not, or does it change if you touch it? It changes, right? The normal force's idea is to try to balance out all the forces going the opposite way, which we'll see here in a little bit. Um, the reason that these books don't fall through my lab station, remember these books have a force of gravity going down, right? And every net force causes an acceleration, but these books aren't accelerate, right? So that must mean that there's some force balancing out the force of gravity or the weight of the books. It's the normal force pointing back up. Okay? It's the normal force pointing back up. It's the lab station's atoms not wanting to cave in and collapse. Okay? Normal force can grow and shrink and shrink. If I push down on the books, now the normal force has to grow. Because it has to counteract the force of gravity of the books and my force of push. If I lift the books up a little bit, not too much, but apply a little bit of force upwards, normal force gets to shrink. Because my force of pull is actually helping it out. It's actually helping it out to balance out the force of gravity. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, there's always a breaking point where you finally overcome normal force. Um, and that has to be specifically with chemistry. Yeah. Yes. That's something we're going to do. Yes. Okay. Um, if you're, you pushed down on it perpendicularly and it didn't collapse or what at a certain point. What if you pushed it that way? At an angle? We're going to get there. Okay. We'll get there. Um, that's normal. Tension in a rope is just what it sounds. It's a force inside of a rope. Um, friction. Here's what you need to know about friction. Um, and, and we'll do a little bit more with it, but friction um, is the force that opposes the direction of motion. Right. Friction opposes the direction of motion. It is always opposite the way you move. And I should say this, if it's on a surface, okay, not only is it opposite the way you move, naturally if it's on a surface it will be parallel to the surface. Okay. Um, one thing that always gets people mixed up, if you can imagine uh, pulling a sled, you know, kind of Christmas time around here, pulling a sled, right? You don't like getting down level with the sled and kind of hop along and make sure you're pulling it completely horizontally, right? That's ridiculous. I mean, you have a rope or something, you're pulling at an angle, right? So your force is kind of coming up at an angle. But which way is friction going? Opposite the direction of motion. I'm pulling the sled like this. Friction is going parallel to the surface, the opposite the direction of motion. Okay? Push, push or pull, self explanatory, gravity. You always have gravity. You always, always, always have gravity if you are on Earth or any other planet. You will always have gravity. You will only have normal force if the object is on a surface. But you always have gravity. Gravity always goes straight down. Straight down. No ifs, no ands, no buts about it. I don't care if it's on a ramp. I don't care if it's at an angle. I don't care which way it's going. Gravity goes straight down. Okay? Yes. Gravity is still there. Even if you go into a vacuum, gravity is still there. For example, space is a pretty good vacuum. All right. Space is a pretty good vacuum. The reason we have an atmosphere here on Earth due to the multiple other reasons is gravity, right? It's, it's gravity of the Earth holding the air molecules down, okay? Um, whenever you get out of space, now there really isn't any air. It, it's a vacuum. It's just empty. It is empty space, right? Plus space, all right? Um, whenever you get up there, gravity still exists, right? I mean, the moon is held to the Earth by gravity even though there's this big vacuum between the two. Right? Gravity is a weird force. It acts what, no matter what. It just, it just goes. Okay? Just acts like it. Um, rules to remember with free body diagrams. 
velocities are not forces. Velocities or direction of motions are not forces. Guarantee you on the thing I'm about to give you to do with free body diagrams, half of you on the problem where a football gets kicked and it's already up in the air off the foot will put the direction of the football going up as a force. It's not. There is no force continuing to propel it upwards after it's already left the foot. That's just its initial velocity. Okay? Velocities are not forces. Um, whenever you're doing this, reduce the object down to a dot. Don't draw this big gangly picture for your free body diagrams. Um, what about if you actually use boxes as, as its examples? I want you to reduce it all the way down to a dot. Okay? Um, draw all forces proportional to the magnitude. Five newton forces should be larger than two newton forces. Okay? And then, whenever you're doing this, you must draw a free body for everything involved. Okay? There are multiple objects. You must draw its free body. So now, a couple of examples for you. Stoplight hangs on a power lock. So if my stoplight, if the actual picture looks something like this, right? My free body, I'm going to reduce the object down to a dot. And now I'm going to label all the forces. What forces act on the stoplight? Goes which way for gravity? Down. Now all I, did, all I need to care about is the stoplight. I don't care about anything else, just the stoplight. What's the other force? Tension goes where? Up. Tension goes up. I don't care about the power line up at the top. I only care about one object at a time. Now, if I had to care about the power line, I'd have to do another free body for the power line in and of itself. Okay? Tension goes up. So let's take a T. Car accelerates down the road. The car is accelerating forward. All right, so what forces are happening? All right, I got gravity goes which way? Down. Always going to be there. Heard friction. All right, if, if the car is accelerating to your right, which way does friction go? Left. If the car is accelerating to our right, the force of friction must come back to your left. This should say FG. Excuse me. Normal push. Normal goes which way? <laughs> Perpendicular to the surface, which is straight up, assuming the car is on a flat surface. One last force. Force of push, right? The engine. Right? Right, you could include air friction in there. We are, for the most part, going to neglect air friction. Right, I'll discuss the idea and concept of air friction in this unit, but trust me, you don't want to deal with air friction. Right. Air friction is proportional to the velocity of going, and the velocity changes as you accelerate. That means the force of friction changes consistently. And for the first chunk, it changes on a linear basis. For the second chunk, it changes on a x squared basis, and then it grows that way. It's not much fun. Okay. So, so air friction changes with your altitude. Yeah, it would change with your altitude too. Right? Okay. Yeah. All that stuff. Questions about free bikes? All right, let's try some.